In this video, we're going to look at data types. And prior to this, we've learned that all variables inside of Java have to have a data type associated with them. We're going to take a more in-depth look at these data types in a specific set of them called primitive data types. They all hold certain types of values and allow for certain types of data inside of them. The first data type and what this video is about is going to be about integers. And there are four types of integers inside of Java's primitive data types. The second set are real numbers. The third are characters. And the last are Boolean values. Now Java has four different types of integer values, byte, short, int, and long. And you'll notice that they're differentiated by their range. Byte can only hold numbers from negative 128 to positive 128, whereas long can hold a significant amount more. The commonality between all four of these data types is that they're all integers. And what an integer means is it's a whole number. It doesn't have a fraction. And you can see that the range is 128 to 127, not 128.5 to 127.9 or anything like that. You cannot have any type of decimal when we're talking about integers. And so the question becomes, why have four of them? Well, it depends on what you want to store. If you're only storing someone's shoe size, someone's shoe size is not going to get past 127. And so a byte data type would be just fine for that. But if you wanted to store something like the distance from the Earth to the Sun, you'd probably have to use a long value to represent that. The advantage of using the longer integers is that they give you far more values to use, but the disadvantage is it takes up more memory. And as we were just discussing, the difference between an integer and a real number is that integers do not have decimals. So we see valid numbers over here and invalid integers over here. When discussing an integer, it is important to talk about its size because that determines its range. And its size is determined by how many bytes it holds. And inside each byte are something called bits. And a byte is made up of 8 bits. A bit simply stands for binary digit. And a binary digit is either a 1 or a 0. I've given an example below. And as you can see, there are 8 slots. And this entire thing right here is called a byte. Now each pattern inside of a byte can represent a number. If you'd like to see exactly how to do this, please see my videos on number systems, especially the ones relating to base two. But in this case, I'm just going to tell you that what you see here is the base 10 value of 15. And if we change the pattern up, we can see that this pattern here represents 85. And if we change the pattern again, we can see that this number here represents 127. You might find this interesting that this last value here is zero, but we've already reached the max range for a byte. And you may be saying, well, what happens if I put a one inside of the last bit of this byte? Would it go to 255? Because each time you place a one in one of these cells, the value is going to double. But in this case, it is not going to go to 255, and we know that's not possible because that would be out of the range. What it's going to do is something important and interesting. It's going to change the value to a negative value, and in this case, these numbers would represent negative 1. This last bit is called a sign bit. It allows a number to be either positive or negative. If it's a 1, the number is going to be negative, and if it's a 0, it's going to be positive. And this entire thing right here is called a signed integer because the last bit is determining whether a number is positive or negative. And this is true for all four of the data types. The 8th bit, the 16th bit, the 32nd bit, and the 64th bit is not determining what number is being stored inside of the integer. It's determining whether the number is positive or negative. Now that we've been talking about memory storage in bytes and bits, hopefully you've heard the term byte before. And I want to give you some context. Less and less you're hearing this term, kilobyte, which is a thousand bytes. A megabyte, which is a million bytes. You're probably more familiar with a gigabyte, which is a billion bytes, and a terabyte, which is a trillion bytes. 
the important thing that I want you to notice here is that all of these memory values come down to a byte, which is 8 bits of 1s and zeros. And so whenever you're talking about memory with a computer, you're really just referring to how many 1s and zeros are able to be stored on my computer. In this slide, we have defined the variable num1 as a byte. And let's see what happens when we try to run this program. We get an error. And hopefully you can know from the previous slides the error is caused because 500 is too large of a number for a byte to be stored in. The range is negative 128 to positive 127. And therefore, this program would cause an error. In this next slide, let's say that we are trying to store 5.5. Now that is definitely in the range of negative 128 to positive 127. But hopefully you can see this would cause an error because 5.5 is not an integer. It's a real number. And if you tried to do this in a program, you'd certainly get an error. Integers can only be whole numbers, not fractions. In this next example, we have byte, short, int, and long. All of the values are appropriate for the particular data type. 100 would fit inside of byte, 10,000 would fit inside of short, 1 million inside of int, and 1 trillion inside of long. But if we tried to run this program, we would see that it would give us an error. And the error is the commas that we have delineating each three sets of zeros. While it's nice for readability, the program wouldn't run because it thinks the comma is doing something besides dividing out the zeros. So it's important to note, do not put commas to separate values. Now, if we try to run this again, it would give us another error. This error might not be as obvious. Whenever you're using long values, you must put an L at the end of them. There is a caveat to this, though. You only have to add an L if the number is above 2.1 billion, which is the largest size for an integer. So if it's larger than an integer, you must add an L at the end. And you can see that I've added an L at the end, but it almost looks like a 1. And this is a lowercase l. It's common practice to, instead of adding a lowercase l, to add an uppercase l. The lowercase l will still run, but the uppercase l adds to readability and lets us know, hey, this number is a long, not a large number with a 1 at the end. So finally, now when we run the program, we'll get exactly what we expect. 100, 10,000, 1 million, and a trillion. The integer data type is one of Java's primitive data types. An integer is a whole number and will not contain a decimal. Depending on what type of data you want to have depends on which integer you should use. Now most of the time an int is used inside of Java and occasionally a long if you have an extraordinarily large number. And there's even a class called big integer to deal with numbers even bigger than longs. Byte and short were used in the early days of programming because memory wasn't as available as it is today. Because remember, all a byte is, is a string of ones and zeros. And you can hold a significant amount inside of an integer, negative 2.1 billion to positive 2.1 billion. And so as you can see, in this range, most numbers can fit. Occasionally, again, you might have to use a long. Remember that the first bit in each of these four data types is a sign bit. Its only purpose is to say whether the resulting number is going to be positive or negative. So that rounds out our discussion of integers, which are whole numbers inside of Java's primitive data types.